Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek. A while back, I asked if you guys wanted to see a glass only on an Apple Watch Series 9. So today, we're going to do that. Let's get started. All right, here I've got I've got the Series 9, 45 millimeter. As you can see, we've got this crack runs up here, over there, across the top. But the nice thing is, is when I go to power it off, for example, see that the touch works everywhere. Now, one of the difficult things about these watches is the glass removal. Glass removal on any watch is difficult. However, on the 7, 8, and 9 series, when we take a look at the actual glass, you'll see that it's flat. You can see this one has an, a sheet of OCA, right? Right here, you can see the protector for it, which we will be, we'll be removing the OCA for this particular repair but it's flat. You'd think that would be easier than having it in basically all of the other models, but it is not, and we'll get into that. Now that the watch is off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this curved screen disassembler tool. It's really flexible. We're gonna push it down into the side of the watch, and it can go down pretty far. And on this model, the bezel is is part of the screen instead of there being a gasket. And I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol and flood down inside of there so we can help remove it. On any model before the seven, if you add alcohol or heat and a few other things, you, you risk completely ruining the gasket or force touch depending on the model. On the 789 and ultras, you can basically use anything you want to because there's no gasket. So we're gonna put some pressure on there. I'm gonna take this thin piece of plastic it's an OCA protector, and I'm going to cut into the adhesive. Now I can pull off the metal piece, and we're just going to slice under, adding alcohol as I go, rounding it around the corners. And I'm going to go back in now that I've passed the side. And now we can cut down the side. And you can work all the way around all four sides. Be careful with any flex cables or antennas. Click the crown, you'll be able to see if it still works without turning it back on and then the screen will pop off. We've got two dents down here at the bottom of this one that we'll have to deal with, or potentially work around, dent back, so it doesn't crack the new glass. We'll go ahead and turn on our heat plate, let the screen warm up a little bit so we can extract the flex from it. Now that we're warmed up, we'll grab it. I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol, put a few drops there, and we'll slowly peel up the flexes and spin it around, following the flexes to the connectors, I have a pair of tweezers, and gently go in, peel up the stickers, flip up the little connectors, and once both latches are up, we'll make sure the sticker is completely disattached, and then we'll pull straight back. And you never want to pull this way, you always want to pull this way, otherwise you'll break the connectors. And you also don't want to tug too hard on this because you can delaminate the solder joints from the motherboard. There isn't a whole lot of solder holding them down. So why is this so difficult? You can see right here, that might be a little bit of delamination of the top layer, but I think it also just might be the way that the glass cracked here. Anytime I see glinting areas, I'm a little concerned about the layers. Now, this type of display is extremely difficult to work with without damaging it because there's several top layers to it. And typically when I'm working on watches, I'm looking for the area where I have the cracks to start cutting the glass off. But on these ones, I look for the best corner to work with. I want my wire to end up here at the end. So I'm going to start in this corner because there's very few damages, like this corner is cracked, this one not. And I'm going to work my way towards this corner from this corner to this corner. And I'm about to give you one of the biggest secrets to being, to making sure that this is successful and that is getting a razor blade and what we're going to do is carefully remove the smallest sliver of the plastic frame because of the way that they manufacture this it's fused to the glass not necessarily adhered but more fused to the glass and it makes it really difficult for the wire to actually want to start anywhere so what I like to do is remove the smallest amount. You almost can't see what I'm going to remove with the eye. You have to be under magnification. 
In fact, let's go under magnification so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so here you can see we've got the display. You can see the way that it cracked on that one side. And here you can see the edge, how it's perfectly in line and flush with the glass. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the blade and I'm gonna score the edge of the plastic here, removing the smallest amount of plastic. You'd never, you won't be able to tell. It's gonna make a world of difference when it comes to removing this glass. Now it's not like I can shove this blade under the plastic and create create more space because the display literally is kind of embedded in this frame. And so you can't just remove a bunch, otherwise you actually might damage the, the display. And you can see here's the wire that we're gonna be using to cut with. You can see literally the amount that I removed is the thickness of the wire. Super, super thin. The wire now has a place to just barely disappear under the glass edge there. All right, so we're gonna be using this long lasting 3M tape. I talked about it in a previous video. Line it up with the edge that we just worked on and we'll get rid of all of the big bubbles. We'll line it up with those nine holes. We'll tape down the sides. And you could have, you heard when it really fully engaged. So we want that suction there. And I'm gonna cut with the wire. And this really is something that I can't, it's hard to explain, but it's by feel in the cutting. You, you have to really experience it to understand. We'll take the wire and I'm gonna start cutting and we're gonna try to remove the glass without damaging the display. It's composed of several different layers and sometimes the wire gets into them. They're so thin you can't tell you're cutting through them. So here we go. All right, we're through. I'm gonna go back one more time because sometimes it, Parts like to stick a little bit and we're off. Best case scenario is you end up with most of the OC on this side. And now we've got here some delamination. You can see the light spot. It looks like delamination. I thought that was gonna happen. And we're gonna see if we can correct for that because we wanna save that top layer. All right, so here you can see under super magnification, we've got a bunch of adhesive left. And there's this spot that kind of glints like that. There's a very distinct line right there. You can see where it goes from being black to very shiny. That area, all delaminated. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and try to remove all of the uh, OCA that is on there. It's optical clear adhesive. And I'm just using my finger, gently rubbing against it, trying not to spread the delamination or make it pop up in another area. Come in with a drop of isopropyl alcohol. And we'll probably come back with, shortly with some acetone. Alcohol is less abrasive, so you can work with it slowly. Now you can technically get away with removing the delaminated section. It just can cause some interesting effects with with the uh, kind of with the polarizer. So it's there for a reason. And the digitizer is part of the display on this model. It isn't a separate component that you can replace. As you can see, there's no digitizer coming off the top. It's straight display slash digitizer all combined in one display on this model. Now I'm going to grab some acetone and you can see how much better and quicker it cleans the display off. So I'm going to clean off all of this adhesive very gently. We still have some shards of glass here that we've got to contend with, but I'll show you that in a second. All right, so there's a little bit of residue left here and there, but now you can really start to see the delaminated area. It's got this kind of oilish looking with all these bubbles. I actually have a puncture there in that top layer. And then we have these glass shards that we now need to deal with. Along the edge, I'm gonna to try to do it with the razor blade. because It's not OCA that holds the glass to the, to the bezel. Put a little isopropyl alcohol on there. Some of you might be wondering why I'm not using heat. From my experience, which is plenty of it with these watches, anytime heat is applied, it makes things worse. Or spiral out of control real fast. Put more, some more isopropyl alcohol down. And now I'm gonna use the edge of the plastic to kind of act like hopefully a blade and slice under all these shards. All right, to put into perspective, what we're dealing with is all of that delamination and that one section where it cut through. I think we're gonna be able to make that part somewhat invisible. The delamination is our next step. Normally they don't get delaminated, but when and if they do, let me show you how I fix it. Start with this piece of plastic. You can see I've cut it to a very nice fine point and we'll now go under the microscope. All right, we're gonna first start by finding an edge. Put a small 
bezel on the end of the plastic there so that it's like the edge of a blade. And it's kind of hard to see, but the delamination creates a fogginess. I'm gonna expose the edge that's delaminated a little bit more by kind of peeling back the edge of the bezel here, basically scoring under it. This is like surgery. We're, we're doing quite a bit of, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of surgery on this screen. I'm gonna take a little bit of tape, put it on the edge, and we're gonna see if we can pop up the delaminated layer before the tape lets go itself. All right, you can see that I've really got that delamination started and I think I can insert now my plastic. Yep, okay. Now we're under the edge there. I'm gonna carefully work around the edge without cutting through it. We don't wanna cut the little layer. We want to get it out from under the border. So we'll cut through it just like that. There we go. So you can see here from the side how we've got it up like that. Now, now we're gonna take some loca, just a drop here on the end, and I'm gonna slide this under. And basically what we're doing is we're replacing the, lam the delaminated sections. You can already see how black that area is becoming. I'm just gonna fish out all of the bubbles and make sure that everything gets a chance to have some loca on it. And you can see if you work it nice and slowly, that you can get all of the bubbles out. So basically I'm going to go under until I have hit every area that had delamination with the end of the, the sharp piece of plastic. And what's nice is when you take a drop of alcohol and you put it on, that'll tell you if that area is looking good. So for example, you can see we've got a few tiny little bubbles under there where the alcohol is, you can see shiny but the rest of it is nice, solid, and black. So the goal is to get rid of all those little bubbles. So you can see all those little bubbles right there. We're gonna try to just push them out, just gently compressing down the layer. All right, and I know that at this point it doesn't look beautiful, but you can see that the delamination is gone, and I've left a drop above that actual hole in that layer to help prevent any bubbles from getting in it. Now we're going to apply a few drops of loca to the surface. We'll take the protector off of the OCA layer. And with the top layer damaged like this, laminating would not be the option because you would have bubbles. So we're going to use the loca method. So that's why I'm removing the OCA layer. And now we'll put this down. And here's another tech tip. If you get the glass nice and close and then pull on the plastic, It'll create static, which will actually make the loca jump up and cling on to the glass. And now we'll set it down, line it up, and let the tension, the surface tension, spread the loca to all corners. So there's a slight hazy spot where that damage occurred, but otherwise you can see as the loca spreads that the rest of it is nice and solid. But it also shows you that I can't really fake this video. Not that I'd ever fake one, but some people doubt whether or not the end result is real. I'm actually going to go now see if I can get rid of that kind of really shiny area by sticking the plastic into it. All right, I was able to work out that last section. If you hit the light just right, you can still make out that little tiny section. But without that light, it looks beautiful. And there's pretty much no bubbles that I can really see unless I'm under magnification. And even then, they're really tiny. So now all I have to do is hit it with the UV light. And if any of you are concerned about the UV light hitting my hand, it's nothing compared to going out in the sun, slash tanning bed, slash whatever. Oh, this is nothing besides only doing that until I know it's not going to move. Now we can switch it and the table can take the rest of it. Now the loca can be messy, so you have to be aware of that because you don't want it to run all over the edges and onto the back as it can get in the connectors. I want to take the time to really make sure you've cleaned all the edges. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to cure the teeny little gap where the loca makes it to the frame on the edge. And I'm going to do this for the next few minutes. 
until I'm satisfied that it, all of the loco is cured. All right, we need to deal with this dent here and this one. Now, there's really nothing I could do about adding back metal, but we do want to get rid of this little section that sticks in. And I'm going to take the back side of my tweezers here. I'm just going to press nice and firmly, and I'm going to rock back and forth, and it'll actually just bend the aluminum back so that the edge is now lined up in there. It no longer have a smooth transition now. Move the tweezers across it. This section is bent in, so we need to do the same thing here. So basically massaging it back and forth, applying quite a bit of force. And although it's still not pretty, you're not going to get rid of the wrinkles and anything. Now is straight again, and we're going to go and clean out all the junk. And I'm also going to remove the old adhesive. And one of my favorite ways of doing that is with the IR X6 and any tool that spins, even a Dremel with a polished bit. You just whip up the adhesive real fast. And then with some acetone, I'm going to clean out the inside all the way down to the corner. Get rid of all of the dust. We can get a nice good seal when we close up this watch. All right, now you've seen me fix the dents and clean up the frame. And here's the screen we just replaced the glass on. We're going to use the same tool we used to clean up the frame to clean up the bezel. The old adhesive is still on there. Quite nice. You can just take it up the edge and remove all of the adhesive. And then we'll come in with some acetone and we'll polish up that edge, making sure it's nice and free of all of the old adhesive. Now we'll line up the flex cable with the display. Slide in the connectors, make sure they're all the way in. We'll flip down the flaps and then we'll turn it off. As you can see, we have the with the light just right, you can make out kind of some of the issues we had with the, the screen. But from here, you can't tell a thing, especially when the screen is on and they're using it. You'll never be able to see. You'll never be able to see the issues when the screen's on. All right now, we'll just test the touch. And the easiest way to test the touch, of course, is to Go to the power button and I just noticed that above the dent there it did actually nick a, pic a few pixels of the display but these don't typically spread when they're like that I mean they can but they typically don't so we'll go ahead and test the touch everywhere and it's good and this watch is basically all fixed and ready to go and if you're curious this watch was cracked like that for several months which means that lasted in that state for several months which means now that the glass isn't actually able to move at all in that position. It shouldn't do anything more to those pixels. Anyway, we'll just turn this watch off, grab a cold press, and now I'm going to carefully go down in and pipe a nice solid bead along the interior of the frame all the way around so that we can ensure as close to a water resistant watch as possible. Just going to check I didn't miss anything, and then we'll line everything up and compress it down. Get the acetone again and clean out off all of the overspill. Take a rubber band, wind it up a bunch, and that'll equalize the pressure everywhere, giving us a nice good clamp. Looks like we got a little bit more squeeze out now that I put the rubber band on there before it dries. It's easiest to clean it. And this watch is done. And there it is, all fixed and looking good. And there it is, all fixed and ready to go. This one definitely put up a fight, as you saw. It's a completely different beast from before the 7 Series. The design of the display, the sensitivity of the different layers. Hopefully some of the tips and the tricks that I gave in this video will help you accomplish this repair too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.